Hey guys, welcome back to Project Bodybuilding. Day one of the Arnold is a wrap, so here's your open prejudging report. I'll keep this video brief so I can get it out quick, so let's jump into what just happened at the Arnold Classic. If you guys like the video, hit the like button and subscribe for more Arnold Classic coverage. Before we get to that expected but legendary two-man top callout, let's go over some of the highlights or even lowlights from the rest of the lineup. So there were a couple of dark horses heading into this show. I think two of the biggest ones were Antoine Vaillant and John De La Rosa. Antoine took a year off and in his updates he was looking improved in the upper body and he was shredded. And that ended up translating well on stage. He was in fact shredded, one of the most shredded guys in the lineup. And he was able to capitalize on some of the guys that were off. By the looks of it, since he was on the outside of the second callout, he is fighting for a top 5 or 6 finish. Both of which are very, very likely. John took this even further. He was saying that he believed he could take top 3 at the show. But everyone counted him out. He was basically in no one's top 5. Five, let alone top three. But he came in diced, and with John, since he's so complete, even though he's not the biggest guy, he was able to work himself into the top six. He was right next to Raphael in the second call out, which means he'll probably be anywhere from fifth to third, depending on how things ultimately shake out. John did everything he said he was going to do. He's up 12 pounds from the 2023 season, and he was in his best condition yet. So he's already in the top five, and I think he likely ends up in fourth, and that's a great accomplishment. Speaking of accomplishments, I want to give props to Raphael for finally making the necessary improvements. He still got to top 10 in the world with what was his current package, but it was clear he needed more size. Now he's up 20 pounds from the 2022 Olympia, and he kept his lines. I think you can really notice those improvements in the side chest shot especially. He seemed really improved in the chest, shoulders, and triceps. The back still needs some work, mainly some more density, but that will come a time. I was ready to give up on Raphael to be honest, but he took more than a year off and he came back with the gains he needed. And now he's looking to be currently in third at this Arnold Classic. I want to touch on the exact opposite effect of the last three names I mentioned, that of course being Horse MD. He was looking great in the lead up, but boy did he spill over. His posing was a bit better, but that couldn't save him. The glutes were extremely soggy, the back was smooth, and he had a film of water basically everywhere else. And add his abysmal rear double into the mix, and that equals Horse not even making it into the second call out. Horse was compared to Justin Moshiban and Akeem, and I don't even think he was leading that call out. Horse seemed in good spirits, though, you gotta put this into perspective. You were already so good that you were handpicked and invited to the Arnold classic as your second pro show. So he has potential, everyone sees it. One bad show and especially this early on in your career means nothing, but it is a fact that he did drop the ball here. Now I want to get to Samson and Hottie. As everyone is predicting there was a top call out with just these two competitors, maybe someone can be comparable to them by the end of the finals tomorrow night, but as of right now no one is touching these guys, at least in the view of the judges. So we'll get into a brief pose by pose breakdown, but let's talk about them just alone first. Starting with Samson. I don't want to say same old same old for Samson because he is improved, but the main problem still exists conditioning. And no, conditioning isn't everything, but come on, he needs to start coming in sharper. I thought he was going to based on his updates, but I would say this is just standard Samson conditioning. In terms of overall size, he was a little improved, but he always is. However, that waist grew too. The stomach control was not that good. Look at a couple of shots and the transitions. That's not a bubble gut yet, but it was noticeably a little distended, and that's not a good look. Overall, this was a good package from Samson, but I wanted a little bit better conditioning. Hottie, on the other hand, knocked it out of the park. I said multiple times when I was watching the live stream, this was the best hottie since 2019. He improved the quad sweeps, giving him a much better X-frame. He also somehow brought the waist down, giving him a better X-frame. And he already had better conditioning and muscularity over Samson. And now Hottie's encroaching on Samson's margin in the shape department. So Hottie really impressed me, and Samson, not so much. But this is the talk of the town right now, so let's break this down pose by pose just briefly so we can see who might be taking this home after Saturday night finals. Right off the bat in the front double, Samson is going to have one of his strongest poses, since this pose is heavily reliant on a good structure. But Hottie's structure is far from bad, and once we look closer at the details, it's clear who is winning. I definitely like how Samson is doing this one now, I love the execution and his silhouette is great. But Hottie's waist is also cinched in and he has made improvements in the quads, and he was already very wide in the lats and shoulders. So although I think Samson wins the silhouette, Hottie's X-frame is great and Hottie wins through the arms with the better peaks. And then Hottie adds sharper quads and more hardness present throughout his entire physique, and I think he takes the pose with that. I think Samson can win this one though, but you have to be weighting shape heavily in your own judging for that to happen. In the front last spread, even though it's another aesthetics pose, I gotta go with Hottie. Samson's stomach is not locked in, which hurts his taper. Hottie's waist is tighter, even though he has the higher lats, he has the wider lats. So I'm going with him in terms of both lats and torso taper. Samson may be massive in the lower body, but it's not enough to outweigh his loss upstairs. And besides, Hottie's quads are bigger and way more peeled compared to Samson's. So even Hottie limits Samson's margin there in his best body part. And really that hardness he has in the legs is present again throughout his entire physique. Samson looks slightly smooth as always. 
The side chest pose is usually a stronger one for Samson because of his huge pecs, but Hadi does not make it easy on him. Hadi is showcasing a lot of width, shoulder to shoulder here, and his far pec is full and way more detailed than Samson's. Samson's pecs are still very impressive, but I prefer that refinement that Hadi brings. I'm just going to call this area a draw. But Hadi turns right around and wins the arm and dealt thanks to more pop and better separation. And he wins in the midsection too. This will be an ongoing theme, but Samson needs to keep that in check. Hottie's abs are locked in. Samson is relaxed, so Hottie wins this area. And finally, I have Hottie in the side leg. He has the superior detail yet again, and I think he gets close enough to Samson in terms of size, which is no small feat. Overall, I again have to go with Hottie. I like how wide he looks up top, and his extra polish pushes him over the edge in the side leg and in the pecs, which leads to an overall victory, even one of Samson's best poses. The rear double still isn't a strong pose for either gentleman, but Hadi loses less. Samson's back looks a little flimsy, and he doesn't have the lower body conditioning of Hadi. Hadi has more density in the back, a similar amount of detail, more width, the sharper glutes and hams, and I really think that's all enough to win. Maybe no one really wins, but I do think Samson is slightly worse. The rear lat spread is a pretty conclusive one. Hadi is wider in the back, which is crazy considering he's going up against Samson Dowda, who is several inches taller, and who should have the wider structure by default. But nope, Hadi's winning in the width department, and he stays winning in the lower body with his better conditioning. Finally, here is a pose that Samson wins. Hadi is probably the least impressive in the side try. His midsection is great as always, but that's about it. Samson looks more massive from the side now, and his tricep dwarfs Hadi's. These two things alone seal the deal for Samson. Hadi is respectable, but Samson has more raw mass and thickness to finally overtake Hadi's better polish and conditioning, at least in this pose. I don't really think I have to go over this one. Hadi Chupin slams the door in Samson's face in the abs and thighs. And even in Samson's twisting oblique shot, peep that gut. And yes, that's a gut at that point. On paper, Samson should be cleaning up in the most muscular. He's tall, imposing, and massive. But Hadi has the better polish again, and the muscle maturity is off the charts. He has so many striations in the pecs, his world-class midsection gets to play a role in this too, his delts look great, and he is super wide across the shoulders, and the quads are peeled. Samson is bursting full though and carries a lot of mass, so I can't see his argument. I'm going to go ahead and give Samson the benefit of the doubt here though, since he's already lost so much, so I'm going to call this one 50-50. Looking back on this brief comparison, it's easy to see who I think will be walking away with the Arnold Classic title this weekend. I had Samson winning two poses max, and Hadi had some resounding victories with some of the poses he won. I see Samson as the more flawed, less complete, and less conditioned bodybuilder, at least after prejudging. Initially, before the show, I thought Samson could take this, but that was before I saw him here. I thought his shape could pull him through if his conditioning was at least in the same ballpark as Hadi's. Samson already had mass, so he just needed better conditioning in my eyes since he already had shape. But Samson clearly is not even close to Hadi in terms of conditioning. Hadi has also gotten bigger himself and maintains being more muscular. And the shape category is kind of getting a mix up too. Samson still wins in aesthetics, but his stomach hurts him in that department, while Hadi moves closer to him because of his better X frame and tighter waist. With Samson losing in conditioning and losing ground in shape and muscularity departments, I don't see a current path to victory for him. Well, I do, but that would have required the judges to basically only reward shape, and I really hope they don't lean into that way of thinking. I think Hadi's the better bodybuilder. He doesn't have the best lines, but he has some great ones for how much size he carries, and this is the open division after all. Currently, that's how I see this. I have Hadi as the clear favorite heading into day two of the Arnold Classic. Let me know who you saw as the winner, or maybe you think it's currently a tie game. Whatever your thoughts are on this top two, let me know down in the comment section. And with that, I want to end the video here. Those were some of the biggest standout moments for me, and I wanted to share them with you guys, as well as a brief analysis of that top call out. If you guys like this video and want to see more Arnold Classic coverage, hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date on all my future videos. With all that said, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Yeah.